this entire monologue, you're, all you're advocating for are liberal markets with a little bit more government intervention. If you Monocle. want to talk about- He literally said we's, we should end capitalist control of the means of production and Destiny is saying that that's liberalism. Is this Marxist Leninist Destiny now? Is he ML Destiny? We're not going to allow capitalist control firms anymore. That's basically liberalism. What? <laughs> But Mondrag, absolutely. If you want to talk about Mondrag, and we can talk about Mondrag until we're both blue in the face. One, it's not worker managed, okay? It is just worker owned. A lot of the management that comes within a lot of the Mondrag and Federation come from other workers, but they do not vote on all of their policies or productions. That is absolutely not true. Because that's Number what happens. I mean, Mondragon does argument. run itself for profit. That's why if you only change the means of production and not the mode of production, you are still producing commodities for a profit. Now, it happens in this case that the profit is going to the workers, but it still absolutely runs for a profit. All right. Destiny, I'll have a I, here's an olive branch. We set up all corporations as worker owned. You can call that capitalism if you like. Deal? Every single company now owned by the workers expropriate all wealth from any shareholder and it all goes in the hands. We'll call that capitalism. That's why socialists point to it and say, look at how successful it is. Part of the reason why it's successful is the amazing revenues and profits that it returns to its workers that are generated. And then number three, mm -hmm. So literally, this is the this is the logic. I have to pause again because it's so stupid. This is the logic trap. If a worker co-op does really well in the market, or it's not real socialism because they're making a profit. If it fails and collapses and doesn't do well, well, that's proof socialism doesn't work. Really good logic trap. You've got everybody in who supports worker management. If it does well, not actually really socialism. Does poorly, ha, socialism fails. What a good faith actor. What a good faith actor we've got here. Dragon, in order to wait, wait, just let him finish. Growing, let him finish then we'll, in order yeah. to continue growing, one of the problems that Mondragon has started to face recently, and it's one of the reasons why it's criticized by people like Chomsky, is because it's had to continue to acquire more and more workers that do not get controlling shares, that don't have the ability to vote what's going on. Mondragon also trades we'll across thanks markets, for the gift. including going to places like South America and trading with exploited workers. So I don't think that Mondragon, and finally, Mondragon exists under a capitalist mode of economics like mondragon exists and interacts with other people within a capitalist economy which i think is good if mondragon works and succeeds that's awesome i think it's cool i like to see all alternative saying he's types a of he's stupid argument is not winning debate statement you never hear wolf say d is stupid or his argument is stupid he calls him wrong or misinformed but never good point luna good point good point that's that's an aesthetic point that i'm going to take from you that's as gracious. a good point to succeed but i don't understand because how. people will will latch on to me saying something is stupid and going mike is being mean he's saying something is stupid which i shouldn't do you're a good point you wolfie tyler thanks for getting us up as well. and then say that like well this is an example of the failures of capitalism when mondragon exists and thrives right now under a capitalist framework interacting with so many other capitalist sections of the economy and so many other capitalist countries in the world. My problem is that by That's moving right. more towards what you want, you would use government policy to necessarily disallow the types of private ownership or private investment that have been so important with oh, other types of investment around the you're world. Just making this you, stuff can you can keep you can keep saying okay. that I'm I'm making stuff okay. up, but at the end of the day the, the problem Let that me we're explain. Having, you, you don't keep the, the problem we're Well having, here's the thing Destiny says that Wolf supports something that Wolf didn't argue for. Having is the, the definition of socialism, and I, and I noticed that this is like the, it seems to be yes. a key problem with people that call themselves socialists is your definition of socialism is so amorphous and morphing at any particular point in time. I, I still don't really well, you have- You seem to be having trouble with it, but that doesn't make it amorphous. It absolutely is amorphous. Even your oh, definition of capitalism is absolutely amorphous, um, where I, I hear- no, you So this is the debate, ta this is, okay, this is unironically a debate tactic for his audience. This is a permission for his audience to turn off their brain. Like, oh, are you having, are you listening deeply to what Professor Wolf is saying and thinking about it? Well, he's amorphous, so it doesn't make any sense. I can't understand it, so you need to shut off your brain and stop thinking. This is actually signaling to his audience. Loser tactic, by the way. I'll, I'll repeat it in case you didn't catch it the first time. Professor Wolf defined capitalism as a contractual relationship between 
cap private capitalists who own the means of production and agree to pay wage laborers, workers, a wage in exchange for their production. He distinguished it from previous economic systems like feudalism and slavery systems. That, that was his definition of capitalism, the wage labor contract. I'm not familiar with it. I'm all. absolutely familiar with it. I, like, I, <laughs> yeah. I absolutely am able to, if you would like to ask me for my definitions of any of these things, I would be glad to explain it. And you can tell me, you can correct me, Professor, if you think I'm incorrect in my understanding of things. But I believe that w when I ask you to, to tell me, like, what is capitalism? What is socialism? And it feels like I'm I'm listening to Trebek, you know, read off the board in Jeopardy. I feel like that's damaging to Stitch, the thanks we're for the trying tier to one. explain more so than me asking the question. Yeah, well, let me correct you about Mondragon. Uh, that, which is, by the way, how it's pronounced. Mondragon has multiple parts. Some of the parts are the adjustments it's made to living in a capitalist world. That's absolutely correct. That would have to be any worker. Oh, no. Now or has in. Oh, we're losing Wait, the connection. Uh, Richard, you're, you're cutting out. Industries that grew up in feudalism. Oh, sorry. sorry. Do, do, do you mind repeating that last line? You just cut out there for one second. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Any worker co-op that he's not even an affiliate chat has to exist. Twitch within... departnered him and disassociated with him on his comments on the Kyle Rittenhouse shooting of Black Lives Matter protesters, where he said. That's that he supported white redneck militias mowing down dipshit protesters. And so Twitch Legal instructed Twitch's partnership team to de-associate with Destiny. Now, for some reason, he wasn't banned from the platform, so he's allowed to continue streaming on the platform, but he's not allowed to receive any kind of financial support from Twitch. Are you going to check out Vouch's take on the debate? That sounds boring. If you have a clip of him saying anything of value, I'll take a look at it. In the going. framework of a society that's organized differently. That's exactly the way it was when capitalism that's emerged. I can't imagine Vouch is saying anything that I don't already say. Or, I mean, like, I don't think Vouch knows anything about capital markets or, or fiduciary duty. Or he didn't talk about the business decision rule. He didn't talk about the history of feudalism. Like, what, what was Vouch talking about in this debate? It was probably, like, aesthetic comments. Like, they, like, come on. He wasn't saying anything of value. Like, give me a break. Now, that was arrogant. Capitalism. The early capitalist enterprises, towns, villages had to exist within a feudal framework. They had to come to terms with that. Some of them were able to do it. Others of them disappeared. Pepe La V said Wolf used scummy debate tactics. There hasn't been one time that that Wolf has done anything wrong. Not one. Appeared or were overthrown by feudalism until they got big enough and strong enough and learned from the mistakes of early experiments. In he was upset over Wolf's slimy debate tactics and arrogance. What we have right there, ladies and gentlemen, is something I've been saying about Vouch for a long time. Parasocial relationship with destiny makes him his utility as a political commentator very low because destiny is effectively an anti leftist. And Vouch's constant orientation to apologize for him, cover for him, and be an embarrassing kind of camp follower means that anytime the left fights with Destiny, which is often, Vouch has no utility. So if Vouch is a big online debate bro, and whatever Destiny tries to shit on leaders on the left, he does nothing. What's the point of his community but sheepdogging people towards liberalism? It's pathetic. And when we had our debate, that was one of the points that I was uh, not allowed to make over the insult screaming. So, you know, absolute Mr. <laughs> Mr. Smithers energy. Nah, Mr. Smithers was an effective uh, uh, manager inside uh, the corporation. Bausch thinks Richard Wolf had bad optics. Um, Richard Wolf came off like an arrogant asshole the entire time. This goes beyond the the reasonable expectation of like an older academic ta talking to like a Zoomer live streamer. So I, I want to say something right now. This is the whole most hilarious comment coming from Vouch I've ever heard. That's your entire brand. Secondly, do you have anything specific, like a specific time he did it, like a timestamp? Because I have no idea what you're talking about. That's Braxis. I have absolutely no idea what the fuck he's talking about. What times? This is pure copium. What is he talking about? 
he really did come off like an incredibly arrogant. The reason why he feels that way is because he's parasocially attached to Destiny. So when Destiny looks stupid, he gets offended on Destiny's behalf because of his parasocial connection to Destiny. So when Destiny looks stupid, he gets mad at the person making him look stupid. That's it. Arrogant asshole. Um, not just him talking constantly. First of all, Destiny asked questions and, and what, what is he talking about? Destiny asked the questions, he answered them in a measured fashion. At no point have I said he's going on too long. He's every single sentence and word had a purpose. This is a pure copium. And interrupting constantly. He only interrupted when Destiny said stuff that was so off base and wrong. I don't know why the screen is flickering, I apologize. He only interrupted when Destiny said something so off base and wrong, he had to correct it. Like when Destiny said that you have a fiduciary duty to make the stock price go up. I don't know if that's exactly what he said, but he implied that if he didn't have control of owning a work part of a worker co-op, then they wouldn't have fiduciary duty, which is not what that means. Guys, don't, first... don't, I don't want to see any body shaming. I think that's in bad taste. And even when I do it, it's wrong. So don't, don't do that. This time Destiny said anything after the end of his opening statement, Richard Wolf inter like ended it angrily and then chastised Destiny for making prescriptive statements about socialists. That was very weird. He came off. This is just very this is, angry. He watched a different debate. Nothing he said. I mean, this is us optics. This is optics. This is Vouch. Pathetic. What a loser. Capitalism. How to set up a system that would be what it is. Who, who watches that guy? Who is the global system? I expect the Yeah, optics kinds of matters, but he's just wrong. By the way, that's subjective. Let me just say, the reason why he focused on optics is it's entirely subjective. You can't prove that he looked angry or, or that, he was, that he was mean. That's just a subjective statement. So nobody can disprove him because that's his personal belief. That's why he didn't focus on any of the like arguments being made. Because if he, if he actually says that Wolf got this wrong and Destiny got this right, we can fact check that statement. But by saying optically he looked bad, that's a subjective opinion. And you can't actually refute it because his subjective opinion is his subjective opinion. Let me tell you, from my point of view, Wolf's optics were incredible and Destiny's were terrible. Wolf was doing a lecture, free audit of class of his life's work on the internet, 100% good faith, accurate stuff, and D was an illiterate, opinionated student. You can't have a debate with these people when they do, who, who, they, that don't, that won't feel this way because it's who they are. I mean, it's, it's exactly right. Socialists to Pathetic kind of loser, replicate man. that experience. Coddling Russia D's ego, absolutely. China's yeah, he's very concerned about the shared audience. Yeah, you can see the financial calculations going on in, in, in Vouch's mind. You can see, you can see the capitalist logic like, hmm, 43% uh, of my audience is shared with Destiny according to my analytics page. So I have to do my best to scold Professor Wolf for the optics, but not actually debate any of the points he made because I can't keep the radical aesthetic, you know? So that was a very good triangulation that you did there, Vouch. Clinton would be proud. It's a better one, Cuba, Vietnam, and so on. They make efforts. They're learning what you do, what you don't do, what you replicate, what you avoid, and they will get eventually to the scale and sense of how to do it on a more global scale. That's how feudalism That's happened. That's how slavery right, happened. Let's turn down That's the alerts. Thank you, everybody, happened. for all the gifts. And it's you're, reasonable you're the to best. We're going to go That's through and thank everybody at the end of this. Happen. There is no simple definition of socialism that would be, to use your words, correct. No agency gives you out a license. This is correct. That one isn't. A tradition as lively, as global as socialism is always going to have different interpretations, different definitions that argue with one another. That's healthy. That's normal. There's nothing fuzzy or amorphous about it. And Wolf, and just to repeat this in case you just got here, Wolf specifically talked about three broad tendencies within socialist thought. He talked about the social democratic regulation focus of providing concrete material provisions to the working class via regulation like mandatory uh, vacation time, things like inspections of worker safety, labor laws to ensure a uh, trade union organization, sectoral bargaining, you know, that that frame, that social democratic strain of reformist socialism. He talked about the what's what became known as communism, which is state directed, state managed economies with central planning and government owned and controlled 
uh, 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 firms, right? That was a form of socialism and a strain of socialist thought. Then he talked about his own strain of th socialist thought, which was focused on workplace democracy, worker control, worker ownership, the destruction of the private capitalist class and a transition to firms owned and controlled and operated by the workers themselves for the benefit of the workers themselves. Those are the three forms of socialism. And he doesn't say that my form of socialism is real and the other forms aren't. He's just saying this is a particular type of socialist thought that I am focused on as an academic. And these are all forms of socialism that have made mistakes and had failures and also have had tremendous successes. And he talked about the successes of Western Europe. He talked about the successes of China and the Soviet Union in their industrial development under you know central planning. And he also talks about the Mondragon Corporation and its success as a worker cooperative. So he pointed to the successes of all three strains of socialism and what socialism that he believes in. And he says that I am not the arbiter of socialism. I am going to allow all of those strains to exist and argue with one another towards a horizon where we have a mode of production and an economy that isn't controlled by private capital for the interests of the few. How is this complex? I don't understand how this is complex to anyone with a brain. It makes perfect sense. Now you need to argue against those strains. There are arguments against all those strains by capitalists, but Destiny hasn't even attempted to assert them. This is why I wanted to watch the debate, because I wanted to see if Destiny could wrestle up some sort of good capitalist argument against this stuff that Wolf could deal with. But Destiny has failed to even understand the basics of how the world currently operates, which is what makes this lecture so frustrating. The idea that you can have one definition is an authoritarian, authoritative and authoritarian notion that there isn't debate and contestation when there always is. My job was to give you three of the major definitions of socialism that contest in the world today that are widely accepted by everybody of course not but those are the ones that are around and it's reasonable to talk about the tradition in that way mondragon I... is let me finish mondragon is an experiment a very successful one you can if you like attribute everything to capitalism that happens that's good and attribute everything bad that happens to the absence of capitalism. I'm Luna, he demonstrated that all forms of socialism that are in dialogue with each other with varying strains of capitalism. Exactly, it's called human society and politics, of course. And we can look at stuff that we don't like and say that it was a failure. We can talk about things that are successful Oh, we could say things that were not ambitious enough. That's called leftism. We don't have to silo ourselves into one particular opinion and then shut everything else out like a fucking Catholic inquisitor who's screeching about heresy. I'm not this doing isn't that. Very I've never done that. And that, that's really not very interesting. And I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna get into that. I will tell you that's that there are some remarkable out. things that Mondragon has done along the way the majority of its workers voted the following rule. The best paid person in Mondragon cannot get more than eight to nine times what the least best paid person is. This That's was an not attempt true. to, this, I've been there. I've been there, I've okay. watched it, I've looked it's, it's at just it. Not tr so you're telling me that of all the employees true. in Mondragon, the highest paid that employee. Was a, that was a decision. That was a decision made by a large number mm -hmm. of the worker co-ops that make that kind of so decision. So you're telling me that the highest paid employee in Mondragon, it has a in, ratio in, of what any of the. Let me finish. In many of the component co-ops, because you, it's okay, a that's holding correct. company. Yes. It's a holding company of many, many co-ops. In many, many of those co-ops, I can't speak for every one, mm -hmm. this was a common rule. I went and spoke with them. I interrogated them about it. And that's what I discovered. They passed a rule after much debate that a maximum difference of eight to one. You mm -hmm. know that corporate CEOs in this country get roughly, on average, 300 times. It's actually more than that now. 300 is the old number. It's more like 350. Let me look it up now. Lowest paid worker or even the average worker in their uh, employee class. Yeah. What is the so ratio? Of the, able, what is let the me ratio finish. 
they were able to do something about inequality. Wow, here they are, successful in growing. They're the seventh biggest corporation. They're the envy of most other corporations in Europe who cannot show such a history. But they were concerned not just... Here, I found one from 2019, chat. Here, I'm correcting Richard Wolf. He got something wrong. Oh, here it is. In 2019, the ratio of CO to typical worker compensation was 321 to 1. So 300... This is the most recent report, August 2020, 320 to 1. So it's up from 300 to 1 to 320 to 1 in, a, in like five years. The CEOs just got super large brains in the last four, three years, chat. Optimize profit, but to do something like average versus lowest pay. Good point. Okay, I might be, I might be confusing so the two. corrosive to societies like ours, and they were able to do that. That's an interesting quality. Thomas Piketty released a book in 2014 in which he demonstrates in 600 pages that every single capitalism we have a record of has built into it a tendency to ever greater inequality that is only periodically interrupted by revolts from below, like what we had in the 1930s in this country, which never are durable because once the, the revolt passes, the tendency of capitalism to inequality grows. That has always been an inspiration to socialists to advocate for a system that might have within it a built-in mechanism to at least reduce the inequality that that you know, haunts capitalism. And the reality is that Mondragon, and not only that, have demonstrated that there is a quality of worker co-ops that does and effectively a good job of addressing the inequality that otherwise haunts capitalism. And that would be an interesting way to understand why socialists would be drawn. They are not worker managed. The way a corporation works is there are three layers roughly. The employees who do most of the work, the managers who supervise the employees, and then another group of people to whom we give the name directors, the board of directors. The shareholders elect the board of directors because they're the ones who receive legally the profits and they decide what is to be produced, how it's to be produced, what technology to use, where the production happens, and what is done with the profits. The managers don't do that. Okay, so the talk uh, about gentlemen, gentlemen, we're coming up to we're coming up to the hour now. Um, we have had uh, a disproportionate amount of talking time, I think, uh, by you, Professor Wolf. Well, at the same time, uh, Destiny, would you want to give a closing statement to this as as we're coming up? I'll, I'll give you a couple minutes to respond, and then we we got um, we got to I move mean, to I the audience Q and A. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I just, I, I, man, there's so many things. I, c citing, I just think it's incredibly disingenuous to open with Mondragon has 80,000 employees and they voted to have an eight to one pay between owners and, and their, and their, or not owners, the highest not paid owners. employee and the lowest paid employee. But that's not true. You corrected yourself after I corrected you, which I'm grateful for. It's within, mm -hmm. within the co ops, within that federation. I'm willing to. All right. So according to Mondragon, I'm interrupting. Uh, the maximum pay differential between workers within a Mondragon cooperative six times the lowest salary explains Mondragon chief executive Joshu Agarte in his interview with Too Much. We have limits at all our co-ops. No manager within any co-op can make more than six times the salary of any worker in the co-op. We have another limit between co-ops with the maximum difference between one co-op's compensation and another's at 38%. So the top executive at one Mondragon enterprise cannot make more than 38% more than the top executive at another co-op? Yes. Yes, the maximum difference could be 38%, but the maximum pay differential inside any individual co-op can be no more than one to six. The lowest paid Mondragon associate in Spain is making about what? About 288,000 euros. Why do you go all in on Mondragon pay attention to, to the gap between the top and the bottom compensation? Because at Mondragon, we are the owners. Every associate is an owner of the company, and we consider a maximum acceptable pay difference to be one of our solidarity tools. So... The Mondragon, lowest paid Mondragon worker in 2015. Let's take a look at median income in Spain. Back in 2015, the median income was, was, so there you go, chat. Literally the lowest paid makes more than the median worker in Spain. Uh, so 
There you go. Why? Wait, why do, don't the people who do the hard work make more than the managers? Don't the managers do less? Um, there's always going to be a certain level of, of expectation, and there's always going to be a certain level of pay differential between a new associate and somebody who has a senior management position making decisions. So, I, I mean, it seems to be according to the person in charge of Mondragon that Wolf is right. At 320 to 1, it's 50k versus 16 million. At 8 to 1, it's 50k versus 400,000. I mean, you just take the one and multiply it by the other, right? 50 times 320 equals 16 million. Yeah. Management, so like, you know, somebody who's been with the company very long versus somebody who just got in, even as worker co-owners, they're going to have less equity and less responsibility and less income to it. This is the very, very bottom person versus the very, very top. Having that ratio seems about right to me. But that if I were to ask you, you probably couldn't tell me what the highest paid employee within the Mondragon Federation is. What is the ratio of their pay to the lowest paid employee of the Mondragon Federation? Because it has an incredible vertical structure in terms of how it interacts with itself. Now, I could just as easily construct you a world where the ratio of pay between the CEO of Amazon or Walmart is much is is much smaller, where the ratio uh, closes between their lowest paid employee. If I create a Walmart or Amazon holding company and I simply split off all the managerial people or some sectors of that company into their own individual companies and break so it this up is all we all got we corrected this with the link from Mondragon. We already we already corrected that chat. The compensation between can be no greater than thirty eight percent, like that. The way that Mondragon has. Not to no, say that Mondragon, Mondragon did is not, do not that. Not to say that they have totally different sectors. This they have. Up. They have. I'm not making this stuff up. Everybody Absolutely. can go and look at how the company is structured. Everybody can go and look at the different types of things. The they have I'm, grocery I'm, stores. I'm they've got to find. All right, all right. One, one at a time, gentlemen. Yes, right. but so, they do not separate out their managers. They do not separate out one group of workers with high. So this is one thing that Destiny is doing. He's making shit up, lying, and hoping. And Wolf, because he cares about truth, won't say something he's not sure of. So that is a debate tactic called being a liar. Make shit up and say, hypothetically, they could do a thing and have no evidence that they've done such a thing. And then hope your interlocutor will not correct you. But unfortunately, he's talking to Professor Wolf, who's going to correct him for being a liar, a weaselly little liar, still lying, still lying to his audience. There's, that's a hustle. That would be a hustle. It, it, I agree. You're asserting that about believe. Mondragon is just, that's make-believe. You know, Do you, I you guess acknowledge your, that argument, the your argument is so difficult that you have to make up the information to support it. Too bad. My, <laughs> so concrete that I don't think I've had what to bring a, up Can we get some big time. dick wolves in the chat? Man, he doesn't, he deals with little shitheads like Destiny all the time, doesn't he? Get fucking clapped. To make any of my points well, or ask you yeah, any questions that would make, that would make your analysis a little um, richer than I, it is. So something 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 I'm I'm curious about. Would you, why wouldn't you consider just going by the incredibly generous definition you're giving me on point one of socialism, why wouldn't you consider the Democratic Party in the United States a socialist party? As a party that wants to because see more, it doesn't uh, want to end capitalist ownership. Um, more stuff returned to Americans. Wants to see people with a greater control of the workplace. Um, had members that were pushing for 20% ownership in the share of companies, Bernie Sanders and AOC. Why wouldn't you consider the Democratic Party in the United States a socialist party? By the way, co-determination is a socialist idea. What is co-determination? In Germany, every single board of directors has to have 40% of their board of directors elected by the workers. That's called co-determination. The shareholders are not the only people that pick directors. In Germany, it's 40% of the directors are automatically picked by the workers. And if the workers buy shares, they can elect a majority on the board. That's a socialist idea. Now, is it a complete ending of capitalism? No, but it's a socialist horizon push. You're pushing more and more of the power of the corporations into the hands of the workers. Because it opposes almost everything you just mentioned. It has a Merkel small is not name. Merkel didn't put co-determination in. Co-determination was passed by the by the Social Democratic Party of Deutschland, and they haven't been able to repeal it under a conservative. Do you understand that laws get passed in societies and then exist whether or not the current party in power is a conservative party or not? Merkel is a conservative, but she didn't make co-determination a thing. Co-determination was put in by the SPD, the, the Social Democratic Party of Germany, in the past. ...now that is in favor of it, who, by the way, call themselves socialists. Mm -hmm. But the establishment of the... Dem Democratic Party, its history over the last hundred years since uh, Franklin Roosevelt. I mean, that's not fair. Why, would we, why would you talk about the history of it? That is, that's not because relevant. Because that's 
because history is always present. It's absolutely with us. not relevant. You you absolutely said yourself relevant. that the history. No, you said yourself that the Joseph way that we look Biden at socialism is, today is Joseph different Biden. than it was. Last year. So Destiny asks, why is it the Democratic Party a socialist party? And the answer is number one, they don't call themselves socialist, and number two, their policies are not in one of the three camps. Now there are some members of the Democratic Party who are socialists, but as a whole, collectively, it cannot fairly be called a socialist party. And the history is part of that reason. Go. Joseph Biden is a product of that history, as he himself says. That party has been unable to make a government. They couldn't even preserve the level of government intervention that was achieved in the 1930s. The last 70 years have been a rollback of the New Deal, an undoing of it, and that was done. Favorite as much quote of the debate is still "dog equals not cat." Do you understand why that is is part of the definition, right? Like part of the definition of dog is not cat, because if you actually look at the definition of dog, it talks about the genus Canis familiaris. Well, being Canis, that 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 genus is a separate genus from. The feline genus, which is where the domestic cat comes from. So part of the definition of what a dog is, is a negation of what it isn't by not being in that genus, right? So that is actually the definition of dog. Not cat is, and not whale, and not insect, and not fungus, is all there in the definition of dog. Part of the definition, yes, but it cannot be used to make a fully summarized definition. It's, it's not wrong, but that doesn't make it right. It absolutely is right. Dog equals not cat is right but it's not it's it's necessary but not sufficient is i think what you're looking for not all not cats are dogs but all dogs are not cats you get it democratic party as the republicans they the republicans pushed harder the democrats could not only not advance on what was achieved in the 1930s they couldn't even preserve it that's why we have an unemployment problem now and have had a terrible experience. I think we have an unemployment No, finish. absolutely not. Not a single an major unemployment problem. politician proposed a jobs program of the federal government the way worked so Pretty much all animals are defined in terms of animals they are not. Plato's definition of human was featherless biped. And didn't like Denogenes or someone come in and throw a plucked chicken in front of him? Like somebody came in and made fun of uh, his definition and threw a plucked chicken at him and said, is this a human? Was it Denogenes? Digogenes? Or who was it? Digogenes had a very famous quote, chat. This could be your big brain quote of the day. In a rich man's house, there is no place to spit but his face. Oh, well, in the 1930s, you couldn't even have the courage to come up with, with what was already done. It's been a rich. First of all, this is why you should read the Greeks. Obviously, read read Chinese, read African, but read the Greeks. They were funny. The stories are hilarious. They were debating a lot of the same shit we're debating today. Read Roman history. Read Greek history. That shit is fucking fun. It's interesting. Talk about, like, people will not believe how advanced the Roman society was and the Roman bureaucracy and the Roman culture and the Roman democracy and the oligarchy that it fell into and all sorts of other shit. It's super fucking interesting. You should know about the mistakes that we made in the past. I think Zizek is a reincarnation of Dijaj. I can never say his name anymore. I said it once before, now I can't say Democratic it. The Democratic Party has been a retreat from what it did before. All that AOC and, and, and Bernie are trying to do is to bring back the little bit of socialism that the last 75 years of the Democratic Party have been devoted to getting rid of. That's why they're so embarrassed these political centrists by the rise of the left. They thought it was over. They no, had pronounced the is, death of um, socialism. This is an unimaginable so analysis unhappy. of political parties that today in the bad. United States. I don't think the closed shop policies that Biden are advocating for represent some walk back in policies, or I don't think that the Democrats- Okay, first of all, Listen, we love the PRO Act, baby. I'm 100% behind the PRO Act. Do the fucking PRO Act. I'm 100 You know what? That's one of Biden's most based policies. He hasn't signed into law yet. So until it's actually into law, it's just words. But if he passes the PRO Act, I will say Democratic Party got a big old W. And socialists were there with you 100% of the way. That's called politics. We're pragmatists. We do things. I'll make an alliance with a social liberal if they want to do the PRO Act. Fuck yeah. Bring it in. Like who, like what? Democratic Party and the Republican Party push equally or even remotely similarly for the types of economies that they'd like to see today. Um, it, whether or not you have problems- Nobody with thinks the Democratic Party is the exact same as the Republican Party. Maybe, okay, maybe some people for rhetorical reasons have said stuff, stuff like that, but they have 
the problems of the Democratic Party extend from the neoliberalism within it and its connection to capital and the wealthy donor class. And they don't represent the interests of their base of voters. And that tension is what is destroying the Democratic Party's electability. The Democratic Party functions. I don't know if your issues are with the Democratic Party or with the politicians that Americans elect. I know that it's a very popular pastime among lefties to demonize the Democratic Party for not being able to authoritarianly or totalitarianly rule the country uh, absent, you know, the other half of Congress. It seems like Wait, what we just want the 50 Democratic senators and the majority in the House and Senate to vote for the policies they campaign. Campaigned on. Joe Biden campaigned on a $50 minimum wage. Joe Biden, the Democratic Party, campaigned on a robust public option. The Democratic Party campaigned on a robust climate change and infrastructure bill of trillions of dollars. Democratic Party campaigned on the PRO Act. The Democratic Party campaigned on a lot of these fucking issues. We just want them to do what they said they were going to do with the power that they have. I'm not saying use the military. I'm saying pass the law through the House, which you control, and the Senate, which you control, and sign at the White House, which you control. That's not authoritarianism, idiot. A lot of people uh, on the left don't seem to understand how our government functions. I don't know if that includes you or not. Um, well, we, yeah, the, we're, we're I, lucky I think though. Given, we, given... Have, we have folks like you that will help us. Uh, I, yeah, I guess we'll see. Yeah, all right. Why don't, um, why don't we move I, I mean, on to the I, questions? I, all I learned, I, the thing that I've learned the most today, I'm happy to see that the Democratic Party under definition one of socialism, I guess, is considered uh, at least somewhat of a socialist point of view as they are well, uh, is, believers um, of enterprise I and private capitalists. And I guess, I, yeah. I, I mean, there are elements of the Democratic Party that are socialist. You know her name, AOC. Okay? They exist. Socialists within the Democratic Party exist. There's a lot of those people in this chat. But the Democratic Party is not a socialist party. Now, I'd love it to be, but it's not. I just spoke against that. How you got out of that? I told you I, the well, Democratic I, you Party to, was you, not. You started to, you started the to appeal. Of government you started to appeal to it things. The Democratic all right, Party. All right, to, everybody. Or, or we're we're all just yelling. History, years we, back, we've, like, turned, uh, okay. we've turned into a Fox News channel. Let's, let's slow it down. We're going to get right to the audience yeah, Q&A, okay? All right, so we no, have, Mike, by uh, Wolf's we... definition, they are absolutely are socialists. No, absolutely not. There are social democratic strains within the Democratic Party, but the Democratic Party as a whole does not want to, is not a socialist party. It's not even a social democratic party. Now, there's a new, there's a raft of policies that if they get passed, then maybe there's a re reju rejuvenation of the social democratic wing of the Democratic Party. Then you might have a point. But as far as like what's actually happened so far, you don't have a point. And for a lot of socialists like Professor Wolf, like Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden have been are politicians who in their person and in their politics repudiated people like Bernie Sanders and the socialists of the left. So they can't claim socialism now because they want to adopt some policies. A socialist party would want universal health care. We have hundreds and hundreds of questions. Unfortunately, we're not going to get to all of them. I'm going to try and time uh, both of your responses to about two minutes. So I'll give you like a 10 to 15 second warning. When with the election up. of Bill Clinton, the Democrats embraced third way politics and abandoned the New Deal. You could argue they did so with Carter. But yes, your point largely stands. So, that, um, so the first one is going to you, Destiny. What could convince you uh, that your system or your defense of capitalism is wrong and that socialism is a better path forward? Um, I think seeing these things tried on a smaller level and then having more success on larger and progressively larger levels would be convincing. Um, the thing that oftentimes troubles me when people advocate for different economic systems is uh, much like Wolf has done and says maybe the future he won't say he's done this, but the moralizing of like the relationship between an employee and Who employer. Who cares? It's not moralizing. It's a description of what happened. Now, we also put a moralizing judgment on it, which is I don't like the fact that someone goes to work and they produce $150 worth of value and they're paid $7 an hour. I think they should not be living in scrabbling poverty when they produce tremendous wealth for some asshole who doesn't do anything. I think that's not fair. But I also think it's not moralizing to describe it as exploitation. That's just a fact. So sewer socialism, Pepe Ladia is advancing for sewer socialism. Ironic, huh? I wonder if uh, anybody noticed that. Good, good eye. Destiny is literally saying we should do sewer socialism or the moralizing of different aspects of who owns Can the US production. government buy stock in large companies and gain some sort of control over those companies? Yes. Of course they could. There's no rule that says the, the, that the America uh, can't start buying stocks and gain control of companies. Of course we could. We have money. Let's buy it off the market. Of course we could. The Fed already bought shares of companies in the pandemic. Correct. 
Ferran, you are right. Or, or who works in the means of production. I'm not really interested in the relationship between a boss and a worker. What I'm more interested in are the material conditions of people at the end of the day. Um, if different relationships are more beneficial to growing the economy rather than... All right, so this is a very, uh, this is a very Rawlsian perspective. Well then, Destiny, you should be supporting Bernie Sanders for president. Who'd you vote for again? Oh, you didn't... Did Bernie... Did, 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 did Destiny vote in the primary? I thought he didn't vote in the primary. Did he vote in the general? I think he voted in the general. I don't think he voted in the primary, did he? Who did he vote for? Mike, would you agree there are more socialist Dems on the local levels than statewide rep, like in the House and Senate? I would say there are both. I think he was a Pete supporter, or was he a Delaney supporter, or was he a Warren supporter? I'm not interested in the relationship between the boss and the worker, but claims to be interested in material conditions. What bullshit? Well, love the Lord. That's the thing that's funny. Like, the societies that have the most control, like given to the workers, especially like Scandinavian countries in particular, where there's tremendous regulation and tremendous provision of public services, those were put in by socialist people like Richard Wolff. He said he was a not Bernie supporter. There's no not Bernie line on the ballot. You have to pick one. Than shrinking the economy, but producing a quote unquote better relationship. I, I'm more in favor of the former than the latter. Uh, I like capitalism because- I, I don't care about the economy. I care about the conditions of people. So if the economy grew a half a percent less, but there was no world poverty in the world, I would be in favor of that system over a system which had billionaires and trillionaires and billions of people in crushing poverty. I think that having private enterprise uh, adequately allocates capital into sectors of the economy that desperately need that capital allocated to it. Um, I understand that uh, Wolf is laughing because he's probably going to say something like, oh, well, what about They can buy securities, gold, municipal bonds, foreign currencies, etc., but not stock. Oh, and Samika, they, uh, uh, ch they added, uh, so I think they bought bonds, right? They bought corporate bonds and Samika, but like that law could be changed. And I'm so glad that me and the rest of my liberal and even neoliberal friends agree that there are times when the government can step in and it can alleviate some of the problems that the free market doesn't address. For instance, capitalism doesn't solve well for things like healthcare or education, something that we desperately need to realize in the United States as we work to, I guess you could say, socialize those industries, which I'm so glad can happen in a capitalist framework. All right. Okay. Uh, so, Wolf, do you want to respond okay. to any of that, or just get a okay, direct dude. question? And if if All you right, are going to that's... respond, I'm going to just keep uh, the timing to the two minute window. No, I, I, no, I think this is rehashing stuff we went over. So, how about another question? All right. So, for Professor Wolf, were a state to become socialist, how would it thrive within a hostile capitalist world without resorting to the authoritarianism and imperialism of 20th century socialism? I find this sort of remarkable. Uh, these kinds of questions. Imperialism, the imperialism that we study as people who, who are interested in this topic is a product of capitalism. The subordination of the third world, Asia, Africa, and Latin America was a subordination organized and operated by capitalist institutions and capitalistically dominated societies. Imperialism, serious issue for sure, but it is a serious issue that is the product and the activity of capitalism. If you would like to talk about things the Soviet Union did and China has done in terms of their activities in and around other countries, and you want to apply the term imperialism, fine. You'd have to make some adjustments because the logic was different and the outcomes were different. And the scale of it was utterly different. We didn't have the Soviets and the Chinese, at least not yet, have had not organized world wars to hold on and to expand their imperialist empires like World Wars One and Two. So it, I find the whole question strange to put forward, especially without any uh, explanation. And now to address briefly the question. What a state that became socialist would do depends on which of the three basic definitions I offered that state embraced. If it believed that socialism was what you have in Western Europe and Scandinavia, that's what it would do. 15 it would have morning. no problem. Excuse me? Oh, we got 15 seconds left. Okay. That's what it would do if it followed the Soviet model. That's what it would do. And if it did the kind of thing that I'm advocating and the socialists like me do, then it would be devoted to changing the organization of enterprises. Okay. I bring in 
a democracy. Oh no, I hate when I hate when people's internet goes down. Uh, it's so frustrating. Into enterprise inside capitalist enterprises. Okay, to Destiny. Do you think that Jeff Bezos works hundreds of thousands of times harder than his workers? Why should he be the richest person in the world? Um, you don't get compensated based on how hard you work. You get compensated based on the demand for your particular set of skills. Um, there's probably less people that can work in the position that Bezos does than there are people that can work um, in any other more entry-level position at Amazon. Isn't Bezos stepping down from being a CEO? Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos announced on Tuesday that he will be stepping down as the CEO of the online retail empire he founded in 1994. They replace him in the third quarter of 2021. Okay, so when Andy Jassy takes over, we'll see if there'll be a sig sig significant reduction in the stock price because of the amazing super genius dumb of, of Jeff Bezos. Wow. Okay. Uh, Professor wait, do, wait, do you disagree with that? Do you think just as many people could handle being the CEO of a multi-billion dollar company as could handle being somebody that um, works in a I think there store? are literally millions of people that could do the same job as Jeff Bezos at Amazon right now. Or a fast food restaurant? Is there a simple yes or no to that, or am I about to get another lecture? Well, you don't want an answer. You you want you just want the answer you want. You don't want it in the, the form okay. that I would I'm prefer. Sorry. Can I get an answer that doesn't involve feudalism? That's not cute. Is that what the point is here? Okay. All right, we're going to move on to the next give, question. Why don't you just let me? Why don't you just let me respond without coaching me how to do it? Can okay, do I'll, give, I'll give I'll give you two minutes. I'll, I'll go with that. We'll go there. Okay, fine. The what a douchebag, man. The advanced by, by you earlier that you don't to have one person walk away with two hundred billion dollars, roughly the estimate of Bezos's worth. And the vast majority of his employees unable to pay for their kids to go to college is a distribution of the profits of that business that is morally reprehensible. That's how the wealth was accumulated, by the distributions of share dividends to shares, share uh, expansion and share improvement in value. We have a system that rewards one one person with $200 billion and another one with $30,000. That's a remarkable decision to make in a community that calls itself uh, democratic or that what likes to believe it wants to give people uh, a fair and equal chance. No fairness here. No equality. It is revolting. V says Wolf was the arrogant one. Imagine being that ar I mean, that was the most pathetically bad optics and arrogance I've ever seen. How can you look at that and say that, like that he was the bad one? Destiny was the bad faith one. When the wolf brought up feudalism, it was within the context of explaining capitalism. Like, Jesus, what a rude little piece of shit, honestly. Anyone could find this reasonable. And to explain it by saying there's a demand, that's simply what the corporations give each other, the demand. They're the ones who create the demand, which they then fill with themselves because they're the ones who hire each other for that job. It's a remarkable self-serving system where the folks at the top give themselves as much as they can get away with. And if it were looked at that, that way, it would not survive 10 minutes. Wait, what was the original question? The original we question was that... Well, Wait, well, hold on. We were well, asking. We were asking how we react to that inequality. No, uh, the question was why. I asked you why do you think Bezos is compensated so much more than a level? That's not what he didn't ask. Shit. It was a question saying to Destiny, do you think that that Jeff Bezos works tens of thousands of times more productively than uh, the workers and his? Uh, he's tens of thousands of times more productive than any other human or whatever, or thousands of times more productive. It wasn't Destiny asking shit. Employee. Do you think that the demand for those talents is equal between somebody that could be a CEO versus somebody that could work in a supermarket? I don't think the demand for that talent is an explanation of anything. You'd have to explain why the demand is what it is. Who makes the demand? And sure, I can, yeah. What? 
we can That's, talk about all of that. I would imagine you as a professor should know the answer to all these questions, right? Who make, who, well, where is the demand to running a multi-billion dollar company it, that turns it, profits it, for people? First, I mean, uh, first of all, this is not even an understanding of how Bezos got the wealth. Bezos is not being compensated. Bezos had equity ownership of a company. And that equity ownership has expanded to be worth $200 billion using, you know, if he sold all of his shares at the spot price now, he would get $200 billion, which would not happen if he tried to sell all his shares. Stock market would decline. The price would decline tremendously. But he's not being compensated. He just owned the company that has now become more valuable because, why is it more valuable? Because it expropriates, or excuse me, that exploits the wealth from those workers. The workers don't get the share of their production. They don't get the value. It goes into the hands of the corporation, and the corporation's expansion of its value is what has made Bezos 200 billionaire. He's not being compensated. If he quit and never did looked at another fucking thing in Amazon, he'd still be worth more next year if Amazon goes up in share price. He's not being compensated for anything. His expansion of wealth is based on his ownership interests. It's not merit pay. You can explain all of these things. Yeah. I don't know why you would pretend there's not you, an answer. Very you clear. Can cast, you can cast. You can mm -hmm. cast whatever aspersions you want on my qualification. I'm not casting okay. any All right, let's answer. let's let's stick answer. to the audience just, Q and A. It, it, we we yeah, have sure. a few more to get just, through. I know this is spirited. I, I know. Instead come on. Of getting an actual answer. All right, anything, Destiny. It was all moralized. That's yeah. all we have. Destiny. Let's, let's, let's stick to that the wasn't Q &A, moralizing. Okay? He was saying it doesn't it doesn't even pass the smell test. How could you look at someone making two hundred billion dollars but while the workers that work for him make peanuts? How much money is too much for one person to control? How much wealth and resources is too much? Infinite? A trillion? Ten trillion? Fifty trillion? Could somebody own more wealth than every single other human? Would that be reasonable? Um, sure. All right. The next, the next question. Uh, How does Bezos pay back the loans he took out against his shares? He could sell some of his shares. That would be one way. He could refinance. You know. Uh, and if he sells shares to pay back loans, then he would be. Uh, he would. Ha it would be a taxable event. I believe goes. Stop to moralizing. I mean, I just think it's insane to call that moralizing. You have somebody dying in abject poverty and somebody with more wealth they could ever possibly consume and saying, hey, we should take some of the wealth from that guy and save that person's life is not moralizing. And I mean, if you call that moralizing, literally all politics is moralizing to you. Destiny, if you identify as a sock dem, why is it that you did not publicly support Bernie Sanders during his run? Um, I think that some of uh, what Bernie Sanders advocates for goes in directions that I think would be detrimental to the economy. Um, there were larger policies that he had. I don't know how I feel necessarily about a national jobs guarantee. I definitely don't like the push for like nationwide rent control. Um, these are just uh, certain types of, I don't know if the economy can handle like a 15 an hour federal minimum wage at, at the at the federal level. He is to the right of Joe Biden. That's Joe Biden's policy, not Bernie's policy. That's Joe Biden's policy. That's the Democratic Party platform since 2016, actually. That was Hillary Clinton's policy, too. She After she won the nomination with Bernie Sanders, she agreed that a $15 minimum wage was the way to go forward, and it was put in the Democratic Party platform in 2016. By the way, rent control doesn't mean you can't raise rent. It just means you can't arbitrarily raise rent for no fucking reason. And there's usually typically a limit for how much you can raise rent unless you in, are investing into the into the building, right? So you can still see rent increases with rent control. You can't just jack it up 100% because you feel like it. Also, there is no evidence to believe whatsoever that a $15 minimum wage would hurt the economy in any significant way. Even the worst case scenario from the Congressional Budget Office is pretty minimal, like a million jobs being lost over five to 10 years, which would basically be almost impossible to discern. And the best case scenario, they projected zero job loss. So I guess Destiny's feels is over the Congressional Budget Office, which, by the way, had a former Heritage Foundation guy as the head. Um, there were just a lot of policies that Bernie Sanders pushed for. I think at one point he pushed also for that plan for 20% of every business would be owned by workers. I don't know how the United States would manage that. And then his version of... He said, who cares? That would be fine. It exists in other countries. Like what Medicare for about? all went like more extreme than any other version of socialized healthcare in the world. Um, a lot of these things... That's just... not true. And then in the UK, they have the National Health Service where all hospitals are owned by the government and do all doctors and nurses are employees of the government. That's significantly to the left of Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All policy, which purely nationalizes the financing. It doesn't nationalize the, all the hospitals. The NHS is to the left of anything Bernie Sanders proposed.
Why is he a fucking idiot? He's pushed it way too far for me. I didn't think they were politically viable. I would have taken Bernie Sanders easily over Donald Trump or probably a few of the other Democratic candidates, but um, I just felt like there were better, better middle grounds than what Bernie Sanders was pushing for. Okay. Uh, to you, Professor Wolf, um, what is the best way to judge the success of an economic system? I now system, understand uh, that people who shit on you, they are straight up right of Joe Biden. Now you get it, CJ John. Now you understand why people are angry that I exist on Twitch because I'm not a fraud like these other people. And the fraudulent people get very angry when a non-fraud is around. Which is capitalism or socialism. Jesus. Well, you know, there are many, many dimensions, many standards, many metrics that you can use. One of them is economic growth. The other one is the distribution of wealth and income that the society uh, and the economic system generate. Uh, for me, I, I'm committed to asking the question whether the people who do the work, who pour their brains and their muscles in, into the production of goods and services, are or are not entitled to participate in deciding how those goods and services are distributed, how the income, if they are sold in markets, is distributed. I would like to see human beings have the right to participate democratically in the workplace. It is at least as important as participating democratically in the residential community where you live. We have the forms in the latter and the complete absence of it. So for me, a test of an economic system would be how much real democratic participation in both work and residential community life, people are able to have. And on that ground, capitalism falls so far short that it's an easy choice. Okay, to Destiny, uh, under the current conditions of COVID and everything that's happened, as so many people seem to be suffering and it has stratified people between classes, how can you still defend capitalism? I, I don't know. I, I believe, sorry, this one is specifically yeah. about the U.S. response. I think that, that this one is. Really oh, yeah, sure. People yeah. like to attribute like so many strange ills. I, I noticed um, the professor did it earlier when he said our unemployment is very high right now. Like that's a fault of capitalism and we're just ignoring the worldwide pandemic that's currently occurring. First of all, pa our capitalist society made the pandemic worse because we had business leaders complaining about shutdowns hurting their bottom line. And other countries... Like Vietnam, for example, they said, fuck the businesses, we're going to tamp down on this virus because they had different uh, priorities and they largely succeeded and we failed and we have 600,000 dead people to respond to it. No matter what our grand wealth, when we were faced with a collective problem that required us to cooperate for mutual benefit, we failed to do so because of business interests. Um, I, I just... There are ways also other societies did did programs earlier where they just guaranteed payrolls of companies and said, you don't need to pay the payroll. We'll pay 90 percent of the payroll. Don't fire anyone that kept unemployment lower in a lot of other countries. These are just factually react like he's so uninformed, like it's pathetic that our government right now can respond to the pandemic that don't require it to be a socialist government. There have been far more left-leaning governments in other countries that have failed to respond to the pandemic. You can look across the entirety of, world, uh, of like uh, what? Europe for examples of that, if you wish. Um, I just, well, Like I, I what think... country? UK has a conservative uh, leader. France has a fucking piece of shit centrist. Germany has Merkel. What are you talking about? Which countries? That these two things are totally disassociated from other. I think that it is possible to maintain a capitalist economy while also having adequate intervention from the government to alleviate the problems that we have with the pandemic, which we're starting to see under Biden, unfortunately. It's taken a while, but even under Trump, we saw things. Let's Sweden had a dumbass plan. Wait, wait, yeah, let, let him God, keep speaking. He still has uh, a minute left. I, oh, no, sorry. I didn't want to interrupt him during my answer. Go ahead, Professor. Yeah, I would respond in, in, in two ways. Number one, the United States has 4% of the world's population and 20% of the world's COVID deaths. For a rich country with a well-developed medical system, that is a systemic failure beyond all words. So for me, yeah, this is a problem of a system that could not prepare itself pro properly for a pandemic it knows could happen, given the one that we had a century ago, and there are many since that time. And it is likewise a system that was not able to cope very well with what it was unprepared for. The second and final thing I will say is I noticed that there are three governments in the world right now, the United States, Brazil, and India. 
characterized by right-wing governments for most of the time of the pandemic, Trump here, Bolsonaro in Brazil, and Modi in India. Their performances, these three- made this exact point. Of these three right-wing super pro-capitalist leaders are among the worst in the world, more than pretty much every place else. And I think that speaks volumes to what's at stake in making this decision between the pro-capitalist and the pro-socialist. I mean, just to be clear, the yeah, UK, you want to respond Italy, to that? I'll give, Belgium, I'll give it a uh, I mean, like there are other countries that did worse in the United States. And then um, comparably, there are countries that also did. Um, That's an amazing standard. Okay, wait, 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 let, let, let him finish. Let, let, there were some that were Yeah, wait, just worse. let, let Destiny finish with his response. We'll do a one minute time and then we'll, we can get a response back. Okay. I yeah, found I mean, like, the worst country at, like, in the, the U.S. for one million population. Like a lot of countries around the world dropped the ball on this. Some did very well, and some of the ones that Blackie, did very well are one. capitalist countries. You know, places like South Korea that have like heavily liberalized their economy are bastions of like capital success. Have done very, very well when it comes to tracking and dealing with this. I mean, South Korea's expansion literally was 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 planned. They had five year plans from the military junta. It wasn't, and they had extensive protectionism. The reason South Korea got rich is because of the government government planning government investment, especially in education as well, and developing their own domestic industry with protectionism and government interference. If you think South Korea is an example of the free market, you are a fucking don't know what you're talking about. Vietnam has like 10 deaths, yes. Um, all, all, you know, Australia and New Zealand are capitalist countries, and they also did very well countering this. Um, places like the United Kingdom that has socialized healthcare that provides education for its citizens. They had a worse, worse deaths per million than the United Junta, States. Did. You're right. Junta, um, you're right. Again, I'm not saying that like hooray, capitalism can save us or you know any of that stuff. I'm just saying that how your country did, I don't think is necessarily reliant on the uh, organization that you have in your economy. I think it's more important to see what type of Very action capitalist does your now. government take. Which okay. I, I don't know. Maybe Wolf has a definition okay, of socialism. Seconds. where it's also the government coming in and, and intervening for diseases. But, you know, whether you have all worker co-ops or all privately uh, managed firms, I don't see how that matters when it comes to how your country addresses uh, coronavirus. Do you want to, uh, yeah, do you want to, do you want a one minute response to that? And then we'll move on to the next question. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. At the beginning of this discussion, Steve rattled off about how socialist societies have never succeeded. So, he generally equated the socialism with the success. I try to do that now in terms of the COVID response, and he takes exception. He doesn't want it to be so. He doesn't like the linking of the social system with the problem. Well, you really Thanks, can't Mark have Sandra. it both ways. I didn't point out that socialism and, common, uh, and capitalist countries had some general difference. I pointed out that the three of the worst examples of mass death happened in societies led oh, we're, by we're getting there the chat we're almost right. done we're gonna finish that, it that, that leaves a big open space for the variety of other less extreme situations that's the point of it all 10 seconds not that capitalism is the cause of everything but that it contributes in ways that you can identify and trace Okay, uh, question. I, I, wait, wait. Say, let's let's move on. Because, okay, fine. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Five, go. Five second response. I yeah. think that you would have an easier time blaming Chernobyl on socialism than you would the coronavirus response on capitalism. That's all I'm saying. Exactly. That's exactly what you're saying. I see that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, can we uh, two more questions, gentlemen? Uh, do we have time for that? Is that all right? Got all the time in the world. Okay. Uh, to Professor Wolf, worker cooperatives survive and thrive all over the world by the thousands. Why couldn't we build a stable, sustainable economy based on the bottom-up, democratically run cooperatives, emulate that model here in the U.S.? Why hasn't it taken it off yet? Or sorry, why hasn't it taken off yet? Well, there are many reasons. You know, capitalism, and I will apologize in advance for re referring to feudalism and other systems, they not only take a long time to get going and to settle in, but when they do, one of the reasons they succeed is that they develop a culture, a politics that is consistent with, that is built so it reinforces the economic system upon which it sits. Capitalism is no different. If you begin to break down, as capitalism is now doing, and you see efforts, whether they're worker co-ops, socialist movements, uh, labor movements, and so on, beginning the construction, the slow construction of alternatives, they're going to encounter 
politics and culture that stand in the way, politics and culture that militate against it. I can't tell you the number of times I explain worker co-ops to people who really can't get their heads at first around, well, gee, how do they get money or how do they solve their problems or how do they grow? Because in their world, there has to be a boss and the boss has to be, in other words, they have adjusted their own life expectations and understanding of how the world works to the Probably way it is win, now. Even when we lose. All True. of that is breaking down, you but it takes time. And I think that's why the you'll see that while w worker co-ops have existed from the beginning, when the United States was even just a colony, why it takes a long the, time before the... Honestly, chat, honestly, if we did this, nothing would change. You know, if we just, if we just like did this and got all the cringy like graphics off the stage and just did this, literally nothing would change. The combination of breakdown of capitalism and the emergence of these alternatives gets up to speed so that people's political and cultural awarenesses allow them to flourish. All right, final question to you, Destiny. Uh, why do you never mention Vietnam, especially in relationship to uh, how they handled COVID uh, and their success in that area? Um, I don't know specifically why. I looked into, um, for all of my COVID debates, it was usually uh, New Zealand, Australia, uh, South Korea, um, and then on the flip side, places like the United States and the, the UK, for examples of successfully handling the pandemic versus unsuccessfully handling it. Um, in terms UK of, did terrible. Uh, that, that's for the coronavirus stuff. In terms of like economic history, my understanding is that Vietnam tried the, you know, their single part. So all those, th I love New Zealand, they're great, but they're an isolated country in the South Pacific, hundreds of miles away from any other country australia is another isolated continent island continent south korea is isolated from all other countries because they have a demilitarized closed border with their only neighbor a better country to look at would be vietnam which is a poorer country that has land borders with a bunch of other countries and they have a large population china itself would be a good country to look at to see because that's where the virus originated and they have a huge population how did they handle it those are the countries that, you know, I think are the biggest success stories, without a doubt. Plus, they forced a two-week quarantine for anybody coming to the country, re South Korea. That's why they succeeded! Party state, labor unions can only exist under one party. They had a heavily socialized economy. But much like what existed in the USSR, people after their, you know, work shifts would have to spend time throughout the day um, engaging with like a shadow economy or kind of a black economy or a black market where they would have to buy and sell the goods that weren't otherwise available in their country. Um, and the, in Russia, they did this with a system or in the USSR, they did this with a system of blots. Um, I don't know if they've got a formal name for it in the Vietnamese economy, but it seems like the way that Vietnam has worked to kind of modernize their economy through, I think they're called the... I, I'm going to butcher that uh, pronunciation. It's like the Doi Moi reforms. Um, through all of these referendums they did in terms of bringing their economy more in line with being more successful, um, these have all involved the liberalization of their economy, the association with other economies around the world. And you could even see with some multilateral trade agreements like the TPP, um, outside pressure was actually forcing Vietnam to modernize on some of its labor rights. The socialist party of that country was not able to do it on its own. It needed some external association. And we can see that within countries, even socialist countries, that they still have massive problems with some of their uh, populations. I mean, we can point to the Uyghur situation that exists in China as an example of what is supposedly a socialist country having a huge problem dealing with, uh, you, you know, uh, equitable shares of how to treat people within its own borders. All right. Final question to you, uh, Professor Wolf. Uh, under your system of worker cooperatives, would I still get my PlayStation 5? <laughs> Absolutely. You'd have to struggle a little bit for it. You'd have to talk to your fellow workers. You'd have to talk about the distribution of income. You'd have to compare your desire for PlayStation uh, against all the other interests of all the other people. It wouldn't be something you worked out on your own with your particular boss uh, in any way. It would have to be a democratic decision. You'd have to come to terms uh, with that the way you do with democratic uh, decisions uh, now in our society to the extent uh, that we have them. Uh, and I would like to add only- Is that, that a Bastiat question? It sounds like a Bastiat question, right? If if Steve is interested, he could also look at- No, it's a Lance question? Oh, okay. Experience ...with COVID Same uh, thing. that the Cubans had because it is in many ways even better than the ones that the Vietnamese had. 
Uh, for the uh, purposes of complete transparency, I'm just going to state that that last question was actually my own. And now uh, we'll move on to closing statements. Uh, we'll begin. By the uh, way, you can't find a, you can't get a legitimate PS5. You have to go through a scalper and pay like three X fucking uh, list price for much of the release of the PS5. So like, it's not like it was being equitably distributed. <laughs> it was going to the people that had extra money in socialism. Everybody who wanted such a thing would put their names on there and they would get it. Uh, with uh, Destiny and then we will end with Richard Wolf. Uh, you have three minutes. Oh, geez, I didn't write a closing statement. Um, <clears throat> so I, I, at the end of this, I guess my important takeaway for all of this is I think that it is crucial not I can get to my 380. moralize oh, our economic systems. I think that when you start to moralize economic systems, what you forget is that an economic system is merely a tool. Um, I, I don't want to ask a question of like, is a... Okay, I don't want to moralize a gun either, but if a gun is shooting children in the head, I would probably want to get control of that gun, right? So capitalism doesn't, doesn't describe an economy, it also describes who's benefiting and who isn't. This is a dumbass fucking statement. Hammer, good or evil. I want to ask, you know, like, what is the best type of nail that you can hit with a particular hammer? When you begin to point out whether or not a particular economic system is in and of itself good or evil, then you lose sight of what economies are supposed to do, which is efficiently allocate capital or natural resources in ways that make a country as prosperous as possible. When I you say all those things are value judgments efficiently prosperous like he doesn't like this are you kidding me those are all moral statements when you actually break them down what does efficient mean what is what did he what was his exact phraseology let me let me let me go back i want to ask you know like what is the best type of nail that you can hit with a particular hammer best when type of nail involves a value judgment when you begin to point out whether or not a particular economic system is in and of itself good or evil then you lose sight of what economies are supposed to do which is efficiently allocate capital didn't Destiny say slavery isn't inherently evil? Isn't that one of his arguments that slavery isn't inherently evil? Okay, this makes sense now. Now this argument starts to make sense. Or natural if anyone has that clip, go ahead and send that clip to me. Resources in ways that make a country as prosperous as possible. I do agree with Richard Wolf and probably with every socialist or every left-leaning person around the world that there are a ton of problems that exist in the Western world and more specifically in the United States today relating to things like inequality, social justice, uh, lack of access to things like health care or education or basic things like food stamps or shelter or... Um, <clears throat> or other like basic necessities. I just don't see how a soul- What does making a country wealthy mean? If one person owns all the wealth in the country, but it's a lot, is that country wealthy? According to Destiny, the answer is that. It would be you're moralizing. And the answer is yes, it is. Socialist society solves literally any of these things. And I don't feel like I've ever been given an adequate explanation by any socialist for how they would organize their society. Um, usually these arguments are incredibly amorphous or vague, such that literally everything is socialism. Like you can still have private enterprise and co-ops and the government does some things and voila, that's socialism, which just sounds like liberalism to me with government intervention, which is liberalism. Um, or they try to make arguments for more strict forms of socialism. Uh, but I think that it's hard to get them to admit that in those strict forms of socialism, they would disallow things like private investment. And I guess it bothers me because so many innovations and things have existed only under the framework of capitalism that even with public research and public pushing, you weren't able to get. For instance, I believe the LED was discovered um, or was invented in, in, in Russia like 100 years ago. And it wasn't until Western private enterprise took a hold of that invention and started utilizing it that anybody was able to actually enjoy the invention. All right. Thank you. And now, Professor Wolf, closing statements, your three minutes. Sure. I think it's very hard for people to break out of the straitjacket that capitalism, having existed for 300 years, imposes on us, often unconsciously, often through the medium of our parents, our teachers, and, and so forth. Uh, I respect that. That's difficult. Human beings have a hard time doing that. I'm included. But I think that what is unique here is that all those problems of American capitalism that Steve just listed. The difference is whether you see those as distinct problems that you as a good liberal think that the government could address or that some institutional adjustment could address. People who have looked at the inequalities, the instability, the injustices of capitalism have tried that for a long time and it doesn't work. The fact of the matter is we have more inequality now than we had 10, 40, and 60 years ago. That's the system that we live in. 
It's as though what the liberal does is look for every possible explanation other than that the basic system is the problem and system change is the solution. And one last effort to clarify, since it seems murky for Steve. The, the difference I advocate is a radical transformation of the workplace so that the person who comes to work is no longer overwhelmingly an employee, a drone, told where to sit and what to do with what machine on what occasion, and then at the end of the day is told, go home, what happens to what you help to produce is none of your business. That transforming that into a collective community that democratically decides so that every worker has two job descriptions, the particular task and your equal participation in running, designing, and organizing the enterprise. That is a liberation of human capability. It is a transformation of life from the bottom up and represents a kind of socialism which, were it to be achieved, would be a control on the government so it does what the people need and not get shifted off to other things that sustain the state as against the people. That's a lesson learned from the earlier socialisms that the newer socialisms have incorporated. The mass of people will determine, as capitalism, especially in the United States, declines, whether, when, and how to move forward, but the yearning to do better than we're doing in U.S. capitalism, that's already a fact. It's now only a question where it'll go. That's time. The very fact that this conversation is happening and that someone like me was invited to participate is itself a sign of where things are going. Right. So let me say, say something, chat. Uh, you can't tell me if an economic system is efficient or not if you don't tell me what your goals are. You have to have a moral framework before you can use the tool. Why would you use a tool if you have no purpose for the tool? And that is a value judgment, and that is necessary. I mean, anybody who thought this was a close debate is just in full cope mode. All right, thank you so much for participating full in this on both on parts. Full cope uh, mode. Would either of you like to plug any of your current social projects or uh, what you have going on? Okay, chat. That was the Destiny versus Richard Wolf debate, and Destiny got owned even harder than I thought possible. He was utterly and totally and completely beat the fuck out to the point where I don't know how anyone could show their face again after getting so thoroughly humiliated and put in their place. Holy moly. Uh, I, I mean, I legitimately, I feel like every single point, there wasn't one really valid criticism. I would score Destiny zero points. Absolutely zero points. I think it was worth watching just because Professor Wolf is so uh, education and enlightening. That's why we've had Big Dick Wolf as an emote for a long, long, long time. Good lecture by Wolf, such a shame he had a bad student with him. Yeah, the idea that they were even anywhere near a peer is the... I think there was an elevation of destiny that he definitely failed to uh, deserve. Holy moly. Richard Wolf is an, a badass, and you know what? After watching it, I'm glad he did it. I'm glad he did it. Because... A lot of people are going to have seen that and they're going to ha start questioning. And if they can break out, if even a couple dozen people can break out of the destiny parasocial trap, it's a good thing. We do politics here every morning starting at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. You can watch us here on Twitch. We're the morning guy, the morning politics guy, politics frogs in every single day, same time, 10 a.m., day in, day out, and we carry you through your morning and early afternoon politics needs. And if you need more, Mike from PA, we have a YouTube channel. We talked about suburbs, the My Pillow guy, Ted Cruz, we talked about DSA, 
Amazing. Making fun of Tim Pool. Amazing. Look at all of these amazing videos. Get in there, watch them. We have me on Twitter. You got to follow me on Twitter, chat. I'm at 20,614 subs. That means I got like 40 followers on Twitter in the last day. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. Go follow us on Twitter. And of course, join the Discord, where we have an incredible community of left-wing streamers. We have left-wing community. We talk about the stream. We talk about politics. There's gaming content. It's a really awesome, supportive place. Direct action, mutual aid. And you can just let off some steam. And also, you can help produce the show. One of the things I do is I look at the links that are put into the news content suggest suggestions chat room on the Discord. Join the Discord, come hang out, and uh, maybe what you want me to talk about will be part of the next show.